Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and uh, this has been a in the making for a little bit yet. Yeah. Sherry, I got a chance to meet you uh, in Greenville. I think it's about six months ago. Yeah, February, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. So, introduce yourselves if you don't mind, and a little bit about who you are and the name of your business, maybe what you do. Sherry Holmes, and I own Superior Sheds out of Williamston, South Carolina. Um, this is Amy with me. Amy is my the star of the show. Yeah, she is. She is definitely the star <laughs> here. She um, in her mind. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's um, she takes care of me. She makes sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and when I'm supposed to be doing, especially. So she brags on you her. more when you're not around, even than when you are around. So. So just no. it's the truth i'm just telling you it's the truth now she's gonna want to raise <laughs> tell, tell her what is it we'll see we'll see we'll see that's what I'm my not, mom used I'm to tell sure me whenever it was yeah we'll see just say you know you tell me what we can afford right and exactly. i'll be quiet <laughs> <laughs> so i'm 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 outmatched if you guys haven't already noticed on the podcast today and um yeah i'm in a unique position here to where it's it's one guy, and here there are girl power on the other side of this table. That's uh, let me tell you guys. First of all, I'll start here with saying we're outmatched. We need to do better. Whether it sheds or life, I'm not sure. <laughs> but the bathrooms are spectacularly clean here. There you go. The attention to detail is absolutely ludicrous. I love it. Um, we just need to up our game, fellas. I'm not sure what it is. But that's a big part of what I remember about talking with you in Greenville was you are a lady shed builder. I am. And that was uh, something that really stuck out to me. And there's, when I say girl power, I'm not kidding, everybody in this office. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So uh, tell me what's kind of, well, let's start here. I'll tell you what, we'll get to that. How did you find the shed industry? How did it find you? I don't, I don't know. Did you just wake up one day and say, Sheds, want to want to start building them? Sort of. Yeah? Um, so I got into construction five years ago out of the medical field. I um, had no idea what I was doing. And it has been a great challenge. It is, I absolutely love what I'm doing. Part of what we, what our company was doing was Sheds. And it's a general contractor and they decided they wanted to separate the sheds from the general contracting side. So I decided that's what I wanted to do. So I took over that part, got some investors, and um, decided to be a shed manufacturer. And then went out and just kicked butt, just done good. Things like, are going right along. There you very, go. Very pleased. There you go. Perfect. Uh, so it says a lot to say, general contracting decided to separate the shed part because it was already that lucrative. It was already had that much potential just in sheds alone. Yes. You guys are in a, you know, I hate to use the word competition, but you're in a fairly highly competitive market. You're in South Carolina, North Carolina. There's mm -hmm. a lot of shed guys over in this area. So um, why not room for a shed gal, right? Why not exactly. room for a, a shed girl to come in and, and take over? Uh, what's your take away from it at this point you're 15 18 months into ownership of the company yeah. um what's sort of been like your your takeaway to say uh, you told me and that i wanted to capture this beforehand but you were like sheds are fun your genuine interest and in the way you talk about sheds you really do enjoy it i do i do i mean sheds you are so versatile what can you not do with the shed yeah. You know, you can make a chicken house, you can make a dog house, you can make a potting shed, uh, whatever you want. We've made greenhouses. Greenhouses. Um, done a little bit of everything. Yeah, it is fun. And and in such a, a short period of time, but it's it's just sort of the avenue that you've been given. I mean, you were in the medical field for all these times and you said, yeah. I didn't even know sheds were this big of a thing. Is it is that realistic? I, yeah, it was crazy. I was like, can't believe this. They really, that many people really buy sheds? And it's, they do. And you start noticing when you drive around. You yeah. See every yard has at least one shed. Have you guys, here. have you guys started doing the, the, hey, we sold that 
shed whenever you drive by somewhere. You're yes. like, hey, that's mine. I've got I see. three on my way home. <laughs> and I usually go, uh, mine looks better than that one. It's got uh, all yeah, that's right. Trim pieces. Which <laughs> do, because whenever I was out uh, doing like a little tour before we got started here, some really fine attention to detail. I mean, you guys you. have a really good eye. That kind of comes back to a lady's touch. I think a lot of times on seeing the specific details of that, you were telling me about how important the precision cuts on the notched runners meant to you and how you want to see the truckload of lumber whenever it comes out. Right. Uh, but then little details uh, that, that you guys really focus on. And I think a lot of times that can be missing whenever you're not focusing on the customization, you're just focusing on getting something out the door. But um, I understand that that quality control is sort of your, oh. that's your baby. Yes, I am all over them about quality control. Um, Amy takes care of that for me now. So she goes out and makes sure everything's done. And if anything needs to be fixed, she makes sure that it's taken care of for it before it leaves this lot. Yeah. She set the standard, though, and the guys know. If she comes out and sees this building before it's delivered and it's not done, they'll be doing it right before it's delivered yeah. or while it's on the back of the truck. And uh, you guys were bragging on the team so much. Oh, they're uh, great guys. Great yeah. guys. Yeah. It's, well, that culture makes so much working environment so friendly whenever you, you really have that like synergy with your salespeople but also your yeah, your building team and and. and yeah, we got to spend a lot of time talking about that and how sort of your perspective is on the industry, What, how your business has a unique thumbprint. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to come up with a better, we need to, like shed-isms. We need to come up with like a, a shed shed print, maybe your shed print. I don't know. We got to come up with something. Um, it's like Joe Nito's shed education. Shed education. That's right. That's yeah, right. LP and their shed education thing was like, I, I really like it. It's anytime you can play on the words. I always like to say, let me see if I can fit that into my schedule. Um, <laughs> early on, we were we were saying um, when we would interview folks, we would say this uh, shed liberty oh. was on today. So I love, hey, That's I love good. to have fun at work. I don't know about you guys, but Absolutely. I'm having a blast. Oh, you, so. can't, you can't go to work every day and not like your job. That's right. You would be a miserable person. Yes. And I don't want to be a miserable exactly. person. Exactly. <laughs> Because if you're miserable, it spills over to the next that's person right. and the next person, and that's not going to make anybody happy. I love it. So, Amy, how did you wind up into this? What just? This might be a story better told by Sherry. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, go, go ahead. No, well, I was a team lead at Target for several years. And, okay. Um, my husband actually knew Sherry and her husband probably for two years. Yeah. Um, and I worked mid-shifts, and they would meet out after work and – I never met them, so my husband kept talking about this wife of his, and they didn't believe I existed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said, she's not real. Right? She's not <laughs> real. There is no Amy. <laughs> and I, I got to the point where the schedule was not what I wanted. Sherry heard that, so she kind of um, got in contact with me and just said, I, you know, we need somebody. Um, if you're leaving Target, and the rest is history. So I've been here February 2nd. Uh, okay. So right before she took over and, and bought Superior Sheds. So you've got to see the, from day one. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. The, we kind of invented that, the newer part of the wheel together. Yeah. Very cool. That's It's good to have like somebody with you to walk through that, to bounce ideas off of. Um, that's, I'm so glad that Deanna's joined me now full time like with the podcast because it's it's my better half so it's somebody that I can bounce ideas off of and always say hey you're a great judge of character so help help me (laughs) help where I'm weak and we we complement each other through that process so that means a lot for us and she's doing a great job editing all the shows so yeah give a shout give a shout out to to my wife girl power that's right yeah. Nowadays, there seems to be so much to choose from when it comes to offering rent own. So many companies have all these promotional items that go along with the rent own program. It's hard to know where the rent to own program ends and the shed company begins. At Country Classic Rentals, we believe in doing business the old fashioned way. Old fashioned doesn't mean we're not capable, it means we still value a handshake. And we believe when you say something, your word means something. There was a time when you could look someone in the eyes and say what you mean and mean what you say. 
We have built our company from that philosophy. At Country Classic Rentals, you can be confident that when you produce an RTO contract for your customer, we will make sure that the customer is taken care of when they become our customer. Country Classic Rentals is ready to have exploratory phone calls with shed companies in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and Tennessee looking to partner with a trusted and resourceful RTO partner. If you're looking for an RTO partner who will work for you, give us a call at 937-483-4588 or call toll-free at 800-649-5667. Just ask for Stan, and we'll be happy to have a conversation. Country Classic Rentals, the freedom of ownership. I'm telling you, I'm intimidated here today. I'm like, gosh, I, but but in a, in a great way. So what has the challenge been entering this space as a female? Like it's traditionally been sort of a male dominated, um, you know, construction is sort yeah. of male dominated industry and sheds in particular. I'm always running across shed guys, but it's nice to see a lady owned manufacturing location. And what's sort of been your experience with that? So I was telling you earlier that when I first started with the GC that um, sheds kind of were overwhelming to me a little you know, I could go tell somebody how to build a pole barn or a garage or whatever they were building and not skip a beat. But when it came to doing sheds, I just couldn't quite grasp it. So actually, I love them, so it was why I bought it. But when I first bought it, I got out there and started working with the guys. And, you know, they pretty much taught me how to build a shed from the ground up. Figure it out. Until I, they finally told me I was slowing them down. And I was <laughs> There are pictures to prove that it there happened. Are. There are. So. Um, do you feel like that helped you, like your vision for, like the ownership structure, the sales structure? Um, definitely helped the sales structure. Um, it was not near as intimidating as yeah. I thought, you know, as it was before. Uh, because basically, I mean, it's it's a portable building. It's built different than a permanent structure. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't grasp how how does this thing stay together under here and not fall apart when it's being moved around so yeah um it did help it did help tremendously um it seems like whenever guys come in probably and i always say that like i think that ladies sell better whenever they learn good have good product knowledge Mm -hmm. uh because it's either intimidating to guys who think they have the answer or it's impressive that you actually have the product knowledge and the conviction in your voice to say, you know, don't be so surprised that I know what a double double top plate is and right. 16 OC and let me explain to you how the notched runners work and, you know, what we do that's different or, and then, then they're like, wait a minute, I'm talking to a product specialist here. It's not just I'm talking to a lady about sheds that probably doesn't know much i'm talking to someone who knows the product right and then you hit them with the well i own the company (laughs) so (laughs) all of a sudden it's like oh well you must know about it right (laughs) yeah i kind of have to exactly a lot of people have the the mentality you know how many people have you heard say lee iacocca never built a car but he could run the company Mm -hmm. and i did not want to not that i mean lee iacocca but um I didn't want to be in that position. I want to know what I'm doing. I want to know what these buildings are all about. Um, my name's on them. Right. So. Uh, the story I, I used to always tell, uh, I maybe have told it on here before, but I, I always remember the, the 08, and I'm not political on the show at all, but I always remember the 08 presidential campaign. Um, John McCain was running as a more conservative, old-fashioned, trusted you know, vetted kind of guy. And Obama ran a a campaign that I remember one thing he did specifically that really worked with the younger generation was he pointed out that John McCain could not email. He didn't understand technology well enough to email. And that reached the younger generation because how could he possibly run the country whenever he can't email? He's not going to understand us and our, and it, worked like a charm now john mccain was a fighter pilot in the navy and a prisoner of war i can't run a fighter jet but it didn't matter exactly because the campaign worked wonders 
So I used to always think growing up, you had to know how to do everything. But I think a lot of times it's, you can even have a general knowledge, but then something else that you bring to it changes that. And I think that's what you've harvested with like this girl power theme kind of, kind of mantra is to say, we can put a, a, a touch to the shed. We can look and see things that you haven't considered before. And that's creativity at its best. I love it. I don't know. I, it's kudos to team. you. It's a team effort. It is. I say all the time, call me first. You know, Sherry might be busy. If yep. I don't know the answer, I will find someone. There's either a guy in the shop that can answer it for me. I can call Sherry. But it's definitely a team effort. Um, but it works. Well, and it you does. guys do everything in house. I mean, you're you're purchasing. You know, you've procured it. You've built out the vision for what it is. Let's let's talk about uh, for whatever we parts we can share, whatever okay. parts we can get into. The model that you created is sort of it's similar to some, but it's different in some ways. But um, you guys kind of focus on a wholesale model. Yes. Um, so, what was the inspiration for that? What what made you say? I might do something like that as opposed to a consignment lot. Well, I just saw that these there's a lot of dealers out there and they are being held to they make ten percent, period. Doesn't matter what it is, how much markup is in it. It's not costing me any more to send this building across town as it does a county over. Um, so why am I making their what they should be their profit? The best sales pitch you can give to a dealer is you could make more money. Exactly. Selling the, maybe not the same shed, but a similar shed. Yes. Um, but I, I think that some dealers might not be aware of that process. I've, I've always said it's sort of an East Coast versus Midwest thing. I've, just because that's what I observe doesn't mean that's the way it is. It's right. just what I observe. There are salt and peppered shed, um, consignment lots in the midwest as well and there are consignment lots in the east coast as well i think a lot of it just came out of lancaster county in pennsylvania because it is such a notorious shed manufacturing location Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of amish and Mennonite built uh community that they don't focus on selling they focus on building and because they focus on building they sell those to someone and msrp it or even if they don't they try to know their margins, try to know their numbers. Um, we did a couple episodes with Jonathan Oerk about know your numbers, and we're going to try to create um, around three, maybe around four, and kind of talk about that some more in depth, that you have that experience already. That's something you told me you focused on early on was figuring out the margins and showing profitability to a dealer where they could make more. They have right. to invest. They have to invest their skin in the game, so to speak, but there's more opportunity. Um, I love it. I think it attracts a dealer. Uh, Have there been any difficulties though in trying to present that whenever you go out and open up, you've got some dealer locations that that you guys already provide. uh, Maybe looking to do more. Right. Yeah. We got about eight dealers right now. Would love to branch out farther. Mm -hmm. Um, of all the people we've talked to, we've only had really one person that didn't like our model. Um, yeah. That they were just very happy doing what they were doing and wanted to keep on, which is fine. You yeah. know, it's not for everybody. Not everybody is an entrepreneur. You know, they want to work for somebody else. And sure. To me, I am creating a, them, a way for them to be their own business. They're not working for X dealer or X dealer. They happen to be a dealer lot that sells superior shits. Somebody told me once some people value security and some people value opportunity. Exactly. It really just depends on, and maybe both at different points in your life, depending on where you are and how business is set up. So running a successful shed business is hard work, but what if making it easy for your customer to work with you could be the key to unlocking even greater success? That's the goal of Lead Ferno to make your business easy to work with by bringing text messaging into the lead and the sales process. Consumers can text with your business right from your website from any device. You and your team can work smarter with auto replies, saved reply templates, scheduled messages, and more. 
be easier to work with, communicate faster, and close more leads with Leadferno. Watch a demo and start your 14-day free trial and save 33% off your first month. To take advantage of this offer, simply go to geek.com forward slash Leadferno. It's time to turn website traffic into leads with text messaging. What are some of the surprising things to, to you ladies that you, you got into this and you're like, whoa, that was it the customer interaction, the sales process, the, the delivery process? What's been some of the more surprising things that's hit you since you came on? Well, I am definitely a people person. I love being around people. Um, and Amy reason I really wanted her to come to work here is because I knew she had retail experience, which everybody in Good the world call. should have retail experience. So I knew that she would be great talking to people, selling, you know. How, how's the difference been in retail through, through a place like a big box store like Target versus selling sheds at a, on a more individual level? Well, I was a service and engagement team lead. Okay. So I mostly focused on you know, how's the customer experience, um, you know, trying to speed up the process of getting guests in and out, that kind of thing works through COVID. So it was a little more stressful during those periods of times, but I got a lot of one-on-one -on -one with guests there, um, which I think helped me here. Um, and I got a lot of team member experience as far as working with my team members. And um, I think I value, I, I think I like this, situation um maybe just it's it's busy enough for me uh, but i really do enjoy talking about the sheds now now that i've learned plenty um over the over the year but um it, it is very different um but people come in here knowing mostly what they want so you know just telling them about our product typically they're it sells itself yeah the the uh, going into a big box store, Lowe's, or you know something like that, to purchase lumber or to purchase a product, typically the the prices are out there. I had a friend, that's a, a bit of an embarrassing story. I had a friend who thought you could, he could just. He's so used to negotiating. Uh, it's a former boss of mine. I haven't seen him in years, but he used to crack me up. He he thought, I don't. Why can't I negotiate with Walmart? <laughs> so he was, like, he was that guy that was like. You know, you take less on them socks. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was at a yard sale. Right, yeah. Um, I found a lot of times that, that people will take that approach whenever they come in on sheds. It's a brand new shed oh, or it's a shed you haven't yeah. built yet. And they well, would come in you, with... If it's a cash sale, do I get it? I, I just got it yesterday. Yeah. I'm paying cash. So what, what deals do you give for cash? How, how do you respond to that? Right. Like with, with Target, you know, it's the price is the price. You buy it, you don't, you move on. Is there like that temptation to be like, oh, well, I need to get this sale, but well, wait a minute. Why am I discounting this? I, no, my go-to is, you know, these prices are set where they are as low as we can go. Right. And they have to ask, you know. I get it. Well, and I don't know why they people have the perception that if they pay cash, you're not going to pay your sales tax. Or right. Like, you know, it's like, no, we still have to pay our sales tax. we got to be legal. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we have to be. And, and, and doing things the right way never yeah. comes back to, to bite you. It's only whenever you try to skate around it or something like that that you end up yep. getting in trouble somehow. So, yeah, again, it takes me back to a future episode, our past episode of, like, you know, being in compliance. Exactly. It's the right Thank way you. to be. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. Be in compliance in, in, in all areas of your business. It'll save you a lot of heartache and maybe even a lot of dollars. Right. At right. some point. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with you, Amy. Don't discount that. Uh, try to set the perception to say, hey, look, we've, we've done the numbers. And Sherry, if you talk to her for very long at all, you'll find that she has. She talks about figuring out the margins and being a professional on knowing your numbers. Um, where, so you guys are in South Carolina yes. right now. W what are areas that you would look to expand? Are, are you wanting to eventually be a national brand? Would that, that would be, be cool? Exciting. That'd be, that'd be that nice. Would be great. Right? Yeah. Have multiple locations. Yeah. Oh. 
I would love to go into Georgia. Uh-huh. Um, I don't want to grow too fast because I think that is one of the biggest mistakes any company can make. Um, so I want to take it slow, you know, going into Georgia, going into Western North Carolina, right here in this area would be perfect because we are in the Northwest corner of South Carolina in Williamston. So that would be just a natural area to, to expand in. Yeah. It's uh well, yeah, you've got so many areas that you can go from North Carolina down into Georgia, West into Tennessee. There's a lot of population uh, within a hundred mile radius. Uh, but who knows what else eventually you could find manufacturers or those who want to partner with you to maybe do more. I don't know. I, I'm true. sure you're welcome to a phone call. If nothing else, you're welcome this is to tr- very true. Very true. It may be hard for me to expand into other warehouses because of my need to be a perfectionist. Yeah. <laughs> and we found a chink in the armor, <laughs> did we? Okay. We, <laughs> we found a spot in the armor. Well, um, I just got to find a, a, somebody in the area to run it. It's just as much of a perfectionist as I am, I guess. Yeah, there's that, that attention to detail really does matter, though. The vision from the owner or the management team seemingly gets farther and farther away with each step. Right. And that's the hard part. to. I think that's the hard part for anybody to control i've stayed really small here and what we've done with like the the podcast so that i can manage everything in house because i too prefer for things to be done right and then whenever you make a mistake you know i made it yep. you know at least it was on me i'd done it um but yeah handling quality control that's a big thing when that you go out huge. and you see that somebody's not putting the the effort in it's your name it's your business and it's it's your responsibility and livelihood to help make sure that happens so exactly. even if they don't care you have to find a way to motivate them to yeah. to care yeah exactly um and our crew out there is they are on top of everything i mean they care about those buildings too so that helps yeah they support you guys big time you can tell and yeah. it's good to kind of have that uh football team behind you as you're throwing the ball right you just feel much better about it i think what you guys are doing great i think the buildings are are beautiful i think the from what we've talked about even the inner workings of of what you do i think that you're only poised for growth there's only more that you're going to do hello shed sellers let's take a moment to discuss the shed customer and meeting their expectations I remember growing up in the neighborhood where a certain percentage of the houses had well-manicured lawns and well-manicured homes. These were the type of individuals who felt it was important to purchase a well-constructed home or vehicle or maybe equipment to help maintain the quality of the item. As shed manufacturers, we seek to provide a well-built quality shed. We want the customer to feel satisfied that their hard-earned money has been well spent on a product that will last. At LuxGuard, we believe adding high-quality rubber flooring to your line of sheds, makes sense to the customer and adds value the customer can appreciate. With each year, sheds are becoming more complex. The customizations we are seeing are virtually endless. LuxGuard not only gives a complimentary aesthetic appearance for their shed, but also protects the floor from spills and keeps cleanup simple. Offer your customer the customer service they seek with LuxGuard. At LuxGuard, we are committed to delivering exceptional customer service and innovative products to help our customers achieve their goals. We strive to meet the evolving needs of the customers. To speak with one of our ready-to-serve customer product specialists, simply call 336-468-4311. To see our product and view an installation video, just visit our website at LuxGuard.com. LuxGuard, the floor that lasts a lifetime. What is your message to, like, your customer? What is superiors uh philosophy what is your your sales approach what is if if someone could know something about your business if your customer could know what would you want to say to them well i mean i i we've said it we've said it to customers we're gonna take care of you if we get a call hey i don't know that this is right well we're coming out we're gonna look at it we're gonna make it right um and every single building represents I feel like me and Sherry and all these guys and their yeah. hard work, and we don't want an unsatisfied customer. Right, right. We, um, in fact, I got a call. I guess I can say this. 
we do on-site builds, and we got a call from a, a lady that was we were doing her building, and the building was probably 150 feet from the back of her house. And she called. She said, it's just not lined up right. It's um, six inches off on the left side. Oh, wow. So got my shop superintendent, and I said, you got to go out there. And he, they went out there, and they measured from each side of the building, and it was dead on it. So it was a, per- a perception thing. But that just shows you how far we'll go to make sure you're okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there are customers you just won't make happy. Um, oh, yeah. Telling the joke yesterday, I won't tell it here. Uh, the old man and the donkey and the young boy. Look it up if you if you want to hear the joke. Uh, just I'm sure you Google it, you'll find <laughs> it. But um, moral of the story is you can't make everybody happy. And I've always heard the term. Sometimes you have to fire a customer. Um, uh, yeah. Was it Jack? Jack Daly? Maybe I don't remember who. Dave Miller put me onto the book. I think it was. You don't know Jack. I think that's the name of the. I can't remember his last name. Schmidt, maybe? I don't know. Who knows? It was a book. <laughs> somebody wrote a book. Yeah, somebody wrote a book. But he was the he was telling a story about either him or the owner of one of the airlines that kept getting this constant complaint from this one particular customer. And they said, basically, they realized they weren't going to please him. And they said, we're sorry we're going to lose you as a customer. We're sorry we let you down, and we've tried to do everything we could to make you happy, and we apologize, and we understand why you're going to go to another airline moving forward to get your airline tickets. And I thought, you know, in a, in a culture where the customer always wins, sometimes you have to fire the customer if there's no solution. I used to, I worked at a casino, and I was a hotel manager for a while, and any time, trust me, oh, if you're going to get customer complaints, work there. You're going to get some really? complaints. But if I was getting hollered at, I was telling someone just recently this week, I said, one of the things I would always say is, do you want to be mad at me or would you like a solution? And it would almost immediately create that opportunity to speak with them and then seek a solution if one were possible to make you happy. But if you were just mad and I was right. the vocal punching bag for you, then I wasn't going to solve anything anyway, no matter how much I worried myself to make this, this perfection True. happen. Um, I, I've seen that a lot in selling sheds. Um, I'm so curious that looking back two years ago, your risk, the scaredness of jumping into it, what's your attitude now versus then? It was scary. It was. My husband and I talked about it for a long time. Is do we want to do this? Is this something you really want to do? You know, and he's very supportive. Um, he makes it clear. He this better is be. My There's a business. bunch of girls around here that'll <laughs> straighten him out. Yeah, and he and, and he's very clear. This is your business, not my business. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was scary, and I'm not gonna tell you. I don't still don't have days that it's scary. Yeah. You know. Um, Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring, but if you just sit around and worry about tomorrow, you're never going to get anywhere. What did you, did you see whenever you got ready to make this leap? Did you say hey, the shed industry is growing? I think it's doing yeah. more. What was sort of your approach at like looking at sheds as a, in a retail market? As whether I thought it was going to grow or not mm-hmm. the economy, because, um, there was a lot of people that bought some really big houses the last two or three years with the way the economy was, and now it's not. And, and history tells us, you know, you look back at 2008, a lot of people bought those big houses, and then they couldn't pay for them, and they had to downsize. And they, what did they need? They needed sheds. Yeah. So. The, is, the, is like the um, self-storage business, is that like real big around here? Oh, it's huge. Yeah. Huge. I always say that that's where, hey, look, those guys, I'm sure they're great too. I mean, it's a, it's, it seems to be a money maker. It's a, you know, it's a rental process yep. and set up shop and you make money. But I, I feel like that's always opportunity to take business there to a new level. Cause I don't think those people are going to rent for 60 years at a rental right. storage place. So I used to always try to say, Hey, my competition is not really another shed manufacturer or a shed dealer. My competition is trying to show the customer the value and taking that storage unit that you're going to go down there and pay for. We're going to stick it in your backyard. Right. And you'll and be you able to. you can move it if you move it. We have storage right behind us. 
And we've stolen a couple of their potential customers just sure. by saying, no, we don't run those, but let me show you what I do have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, people are looking for the space. It's what we're selling. Storage for, for right. your for your things. You don't have to travel too far to it. You know, safer. Your stuff is right there when you need it. It's in your backyard. It's safer. Like nobody wants to go down to their storage unit at 10 o'clock at night because you have to get something exactly. you really need. And, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. And the biggest thing is if you're going to, if you need a storage unit for a month or two, that's one thing, you know, that makes sense. Sure. But don't do it for long term. Yeah, so. absolutely. There's, well, I mean, with, with RTO, there's a path to ownership. So there's an opportunity that you don't just have to rent. You can actually purchase this thing. It'll be at your house, and one day you'll own it once you make a certain amount of predetermined, agreed upon <laughs> payments. Here exactly. you go. We we leave it there. But a lot of people, I think, maybe maybe Sheds hasn't really created that brand yet because it, a lot of people still think of it like an outbuilding. They don't, you know, it's very traditional. They don't they don't think of like, wait a minute, you're actually telling me that you can in four or five days bring me a inventory building or you can even build me one I like and you're telling me if I'm in an HOA I can actually get exactly what I want color yeah. matching color matching we'll match your house if you've got the color off your house we'll take it over to Sharon Williams and they'll mix up the paint for us and it'll match your house and so. coming from a person who lives in a neighborhood with an HOA part of the process the hardest part of the process is is getting something to HOA showing them exactly what you're going to do and Sherry's taking the time to do that for people you know just draw it up measurements whatever um so that the HOA is, is quick to get back with approval and or you know changes that need to be made and um the chats um it's a does, bit it's big around here the does HOA. that increase business or do you how do you feel it increases yeah. it does especially there are so many high density neighborhoods these days, and we'll build we'll build on site within a relative mileage around here, you know, sixty to eighty miles. Once you start building in the neighborhood and they see who's building, so we okay. Well, I guess we first need to explain that as we're talking about selling to the public, Superior Sheds does not sell to the public. Amy just happens to do double duty <coughs> and sells for one of my dealers as well. So. But we will take the dealer's sign, we'll put it in the yard while they're, we're building their build on site, and neighbor after neighbor after neighbor will start calling, wanting a shed built in their backyard. Do you guys feel like having the, the knowledge of the construction company, the general contracting construction company previously, has helped with yes. your addition to sales? Yeah. How, yeah. how so? Um, in addition to sales, wait, wait, that was back. Well, a maybe not sales specifically, but just your uh, maybe your product knowledge or maybe your understanding of the market and the customer. Like with general contracting, you could be building homes, but you could be building garages, you could be building sheds. Do you feel like having that knowledge helps you? Oh, definitely. If I well, obviously, if I didn't leave the medical field, get into that, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but um. It's, to me, knowing the difference between the shed and a permanent build, you know, I, I think that's why I got so overwhelmed in the beginning with sheds is because I just couldn't understand how you can build this building and move it around. And now that I see the difference, it, yeah, I've known how to build a real building before, a, not a real building, a permanent structure. Yeah, it seems like it would what help with like explanation to less informed customers and not to yep. say ladies are typically that just to say that it's been a male dominated field. So probably they feel more comfortable coming oh, in definitely. and you're able to explain that to them because it's like, Oh yeah, girl, I was the same way. Oh yeah. Let me tell you <laughs> about all I've learned in the last two I years. Think if you could say <laughs> I built several pole barns, you yeah. carry some weight. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I did. I sold a, a, a barn too. I'm a horse person, and so a lot of my friends are horse people, and, and my friend needed a barn. And I sit down and we start talking about this barn and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And she just had this look on her face and she goes, You know, boy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's girl so, stuff. Yeah, it's the wow. girl stuff now. Yeah. 
Yeah. How do you know all that? How do you how do you have all this information? Hello, Shed Sellers. Did you get a chance to view the Real Work Labs interview featuring George Converse? If not, be sure to check out the episode where you can see a condensed demo during the interview. Just go to the Shed Geek Podcast YouTube channel and type in Real Work Labs. George and the team at Real Work Labs have received an influx of interest and new signups, and they are already working to provide real results. Real Work Labs shapes the way customers find you online. We are a software company that helps shed sellers like you get found where the customers live, not where your shed lot is. Our mobile app in the field hooks into your website, so your work and Google reviews are getting found on the map on location. That way, you drive more revenue, higher conversion rates, and true word of mouth referrals online. It's time to put your reviews on the map and leave a digital yard sign at your job sites using Real Work Labs. For more information, just go to shedgeek.realworklabs.com or simply call or text 480-787-7575. Mention the Shed Geek podcast for special pricing and get a 50% discount on setup today. But you guys are fun with it. I, I feel like oh, that, yeah. it, you know, I, I get that from your personality definitely whenever we show up. And, and I got that from, you know, uh, Greenville, the, the Garage Shed Carport Builder show. That was one thing that I took away was like, wait a minute, she's very proud of like a, having a lady owned company yeah. in a fairly male dominated space. And I, I remember thinking that was pretty cool. Uh, we get some funny things that happen with either vendors or somebody probably more so I make a lot of the phone calls for paying the bills and invoices and questions and I think they just think I'm some guy's secretary and when Sherry will get involved if I'm out of town they'll say well I don't usually speak to anyone but Amy and she'll have to say well I am the owner of Superior (laughs) (laughs) Shop. but that that goes to show you her relationship with people too right you know how she interacts with people it also shows the perception of the public that that's kind of like wait a minute you don't get the benefit of the doubt just immediately you get you you get the doubt yeah and you have to almost overcome that doubt so it's maybe an argument there that it's even harder to have to like do two jobs i've got to try to overcome this like bias that i'm not gonna be able to tell you about you know these sheds in an educated way but how fun when she does oh man there's got to be a little bit of like (laughs) yeah there's got to be a little bit of like ego right just a little bit and i know her faces so i've seen that look come over that face and i'm like oh here it comes (laughs) (laughs) okay y'all are making me out to look bad (laughs) no it's not bad there are gentlemen who show up here and they're just putting their screws to you and, and you have a response and that's fantastic yeah uh, so, I'm, I hey, let them have it. You know, yeah. let them have it. You you put the work in. Yeah, I didn't go into this going. I'm gonna be a female shed builder. You know, yeah. It just after I got into, it, I never thought about it. Um, but after I got into it, I was like, hey, I'm a female shed builder. Yeah, I love it. I love that. Like to me, like I said, I think it spells a, a lot of your brand. I mean, to to me. Uh, the final touches and things that you put on there. Where do you think it's going? Where do you think the shed industry is headed? Where does your like expert um, perfectionism and in, in your research tell you? What do you think is going to happen? As far as my my company or sheds, I in think general? in general, in general, I, I, it's going to get bigger. Um, you know, we are already seeing that these portable buildings are being used in certain areas even for living spaces and you know um there's not much difference in our building versus a tiny home Mm -hmm. so in fact there's one in an anderson that are literally like built exactly like sheds yeah and they're like a little tiny home neighborhood so um especially with the the economy the way it is these days um i think it's just gonna get bigger and bigger i mean we don't sell sheds don't to live in that's not that's not allowed sure yeah um, but you know just seeing but where it's going from we here. have to give that clause sometimes because right. we know what's happening and we're like what well, we just need you to know <laughs> that this you cannot is not live certified here. to live in yeah there's but a what you do with it after you purchase it is really not my business <laughs> there's a difference in um 
uh, you know, modular and, and all that and going through the right. specific details of all of that. There's even a whole Facebook group dedicated to like shed to house, like, you know, going oh, yeah. from a shed to a house and uh, lots of banter on there, you know, and trying to figure it because a, a tiny home, really we are entering uh, into a lot of that market. I've said this on the show before, so maybe people are tired of hearing it, but like we sort of can service both spaces in, in many ways. The, the person who's looking to live minimalistic with a shed and limited space, we can build that. But then at the same time, somebody who has excess storage and stuff, we can build your space for your, your storage. So uh, the, the builds itself are, are fairly similar, but then they become more complex as people are buying, oh, I want to finish this out. And you know, early on, like Tiny Home Nation and stuff like that was like a, a 200 square foot on, on a chassis. And now tiny home, the, the words being stretched into, you know, meeting international building codes and 900 right. square feet. And, you know, what's a 16 by 40 or well, 640 square feet. That's not enough, but it doesn't matter because we can use it. We're going to turn that in. And if they're buying cash for it, then it's really just a, it is out of your hands. It's a matter of right. them getting with the right municipalities to make sure they're doing things right. And then there's this whole other complication if it's rented uh, yeah. <laughs> so, exactly yeah um the other the other area that um after covid and people are having home offices these are perfect home offices yoga studios yes music studios workout yeah. rooms hunting we just, cabins we just did a um no it wasn't a build on site we, we made it here uh built it here but it was uh, a gentleman is making his wine in oh, yeah their building Uh-oh. and um he brought us some Awesome. Of his hey. It was good. Look at that. that it's, it's, they were a fun couple because they're, they had to have their building turned a specific way so that at night when they're enjoying their wine on their porch, their kid, their daughter who lives here with her husband and child can't spy on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were a blast. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's so many uses. Yeah, I've got a friend. You're talking about a recording studio right down the road here. Um, Andrew has a building and that he has made into a recording studio and they do some pretty good sized names over there i mean not like sure not nashville not but nashville but yeah. Yeah. yeah well i started i mean started in a shed i had a shed in my backyard that i bought and turned into an office and fixed it up and started the podcast out of it it was my home office it was never i was working either on the road or at home yeah. I, I like to have sort of my separate space um and it it kind of felt that way because when you're working from home, you don't know when you're working and when you're at home. So it was nice to have that space to go into that was workspace. Right. And when I came out of that door, it was home space. I knew the difference and it just, I don't know. It felt, it felt better about the, the vision that we had, but they, I've seen some really unique jobs that people have done. I would love to at some point do like a, I don't know, maybe do a, like an episode over like some of the more unique things that people have did with sheds. Um, it's if, especially if I could travel to like get some, or if nothing else, get some pictures or some videos. I think that chicken coop, that was just a hoot watching them go through oh. the whole process of building it. She came here to ask, could we build? I, I think she wanted something specific. And basically Brian who works in the shop said, well, we certainly can build a utility shed and make modifications to it it ended up being so cute and then we did the um the dog kennel that oh. was i'd like the taj yeah. mahal of dog kennels <laughs> by the time it was finished it was dog they mentions we, we angled the floor we angled the floor put a drain in the center oh yeah so that they could hose it out sure the marine gray paint sink on the floor for bathing the dogs yeah. Very nice. Well, beauty. customization yeah. sales, and uh, uh, most folks are looking for something unique. They are. Like, well, you know, there's, I think so, there's there's the cookie cutter version where somebody just, want, hey, I just need something, give me what you got. I'm just looking to get in, into a building. But uh, th- because we're all unique, I think a lot of people are looking to put that special touch on, specifically on there, and that's where you guys are certainly able to meet both needs. Right. And, uh I love what you're doing. I love that you're excited about it. I hope you don't lose that excitement because it can be um, well, 
between competition and so many other things that can really uh, wear on you customers oh, yeah. and, and things like that can wear on you supply, you know, demand and uh, figuring out the ebbs and flows of things whenever we're looking for material or uh, yeah, it can, it can become a lot. It's a, uh, but it's fun. You're providing, you're able to dream with someone, their little particular space. Some people just want a place to throw a wheelbarrow, but some people really want, exactly. They exactly. want you to work with them and a vision with them on what their space is. And sheds are not just, they are still a place to throw a, a wheelbarrow, mm-hmm. but they have become so much more over they time. Have. So, And that was part of, not to say men don't like nice things, but, you know, men want a place to throw their wheelbarrow. It right. doesn't matter. It's in the back yeah. corner of the, women want to look out their window and see something nice. I mean, the whole emergence of she sheds. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. just, you know, what, what they're doing with those, um, my wife loves to crochet. I promise you, I promise you we could fill a 16 by 40 with stacks of yarn and who knows what else she would love it. But it, it's just, it's turned into so much different. And it that's has. where, when you enter that space and you had, uh, you were really focused on like sales and marketing kind of whenever you got yeah. into this, you sort of seen the value of being able to, and, and, we don't talk numbers here on the podcast, but we can say it's done well from where you found it to where it is. It has. It yeah. has. Yeah. And a lot of that has probably been because of your sales and marketing experience. Possibly. I have really good internet guy, yeah. um, which helps. Good. Um, because I, you know, talking about not being able to send an email. I can send in emails, but I, I don't know much about, um, back working of the website and all that so you should run for president i should <laughs> well i promise you there are plenty of talents that you're going to have regardless of that and it's about Thank harvesting you. your strengths and it's about finding the right people to be around to fulfill your weaknesses and you, you work off of each other on that and oh yeah that's why we have a definitely yeah i think you guys are great i think you're doing i love your energy um if there's somebody looking to expand, at least an exploratory phone call, Absolutely. I'm sure you'd be more than yeah. happy to, you listen to the show, but you also uh, go to the trade shows and the different events yep. and magazines and, and all that stuff. So you're always trying to educate yourself on more. Um, so I'm sure you're more than happy to meet with anybody who would want to have a phone call. And if, if they want to talk expansion, yep. who knows where to go. And if they want to just go to our website, mysuperiorsheds.com, there's lots of information there. There's a contact form. You can send that in if you're interested. Um, my number is on there. Um, actually rings right to my cell phone. So, Perfect. um, anytime anybody wants any questions asked. I, I love I love what you're doing. What would your message be? Not so much to the customer, but to the shed industry specifically. What would you guys have to say? Wow. Actually, yes, I would like to tell everybody that if you want to make more than 10% for your efforts and you want to sell top quality buildings, then you need to contact us at Superior Sheds. You can go to our website at mysuperiorsheds.com. We look forward to hearing from all of you. The attention to detail, and I'll say this before we go, is so much so that these ladies either pre-printed or quickly printed a nice little piece of paper to even put on the door while we were here in the office that says, please don't knock or something to that recording effect. In progress. Recording in progress. I've not had that happen yet. That speaks to the... And it was directed at one male that works here. <laughs> We're not going to say any names on air. Not naming names. But, yeah, I see the attention to detail. All I can say is I uh, appreciate you guys meeting with me today. We've we've not just talked sheds here on the podcast, but we've talked sheds for probably a couple hours now, even yeah. beforehand, just because that's what we do. I'm excited to find someone so excited about the shed industry. I wish you nothing but success. I hope you grow, grow, grow. Thank you. You're doing a great job and I'm super impressed with what you've done already. Thank you. And we Thanks. appreciate you coming all the way down here to see us. Oh, that it's a was... blast. I love South Carolina. Amy will tell you how excited I was when, when you reached out a couple weeks ago. Well, yeah. I believe me, I, pr- I promise all you, you, you may find this hard to believe, but I, I told Deanna on the way here, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll forever never know how to react 
the right way. Whenever somebody says, oh, hey, we're so glad you came. I feel like for me, it's always an opportunity to meet you and interview you and tell your story. And anytime somebody says something so kind, I'm like the awkward kid in class. And I'm always like, thank you. You know, I don't know what to, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm just like, thanks so much. I, I, I don't know how to say thank well, you. Well, in South Carolina, you just hug. But, yeah. That's uh, right. Yeah, you yeah. hug. You go on for the hug. But you are doing this industry such a great service. It, it's been, uh, I never get interviewed. I always do interviews. Well, do you right? want to turn the tables yeah. here? Well, <laughs> We'll come it, out with some questions. It's always, yeah, you're welcome to ask any, absolutely any. Um, it's just nice to find like fulfillment and happiness and contentment in what you do. Oh, yeah. I searched for so long and it's kind of like, um, you know, I'd always be close or find something I enjoyed, but never found something. And I felt like, wait a minute, this is, and to get so many compliments and I know this is going to sound very ego, so please don't take it that way. But to have people tell you things like, hey, you're living your gift. You're, or have you had professional development? Because I love your interview style. Now, the, for every one of those, there's probably 10 that's like, I don't like the guy. <laughs> you know, I, don't like the, I don't like his face. Don't I don't like the that. way he talks. But for the most part, hearing those kind things and whenever people say those really nice things to you, it just validates what you already feel, which is I the sheds is the, the people business. And I say mm-hmm. this all the time. The shed is just the avenue. It's the vehicle God gave me to really talk to people and reach people. And I love telling their stories. I love history. I love shed history. Um, and that's why we spent so, what, two hours talking before right. finally my wife shut us down and said, you going to do an interview or are you just going to talk all day? <laughs> and um, I really do enjoy communicating with people. And, and God just gave me the shed to be that avenue right. to talk. It could have been cars. It could have been pocket knives. It could have been baseball cards but it, it, it sheds and right. it's the kindest people such nice people in this industry that that's been beautiful they they treat you with hospitality there's things i couldn't have done that you only know that god said go do this right and you look back on it so i feel some sense of contentment the apostle paul talked about seeking contentment and like Seeking riches is fine too maybe i don't know looking for for money it's necessary but i'll tell you what feeds me is contentment and happiness and i I get i get that by getting to interview people so that's my two cents well there's just when you when you figure out that you may have taught for years and and you liked it but then you get into something like customer service and you realize that you, you just just it's just well within you you know you just feel that some of the best your niche that's right some of the best interviews actually happen without the microphone but i cherish those moments to get to meet people and and uh, hear their stories and how they're you know thriving and or see them in a struggle and then come back later and get a chance to meet them and they're like man you know or i heard this on your podcast and i put that into motion and guess what you know what i mean like we're seeing success in this area i called that guy he was on your podcast oh, and I talked to him and next thing you know, things are going really good. I, I that's, that feel, it feels good to be able to make that connecting piece. Right. Uh, some of the things I want to do is I, I felt like I hadn't found a way to service the industry outside of trying to create advertising to, for people to want to reach a shed manufacturer or hauler or something. So, I mean, I was, that's why we got into marketing. It was like, hey, we can help shed manufacturers be successful, I think, with some of the knowledge we've acquired over the years and connections. So that's why I wanted to try and do that. And I don't know where else it's going, but as long as God opens the door, I'll walk through it. That's if right. he shuts it, see you later. You know what I mean? I'm only going to be obedient. There's a verse that says obedience is greater than sacrifice. I'm only going to be obedient, do what I'm supposed to. And then the doors keep opening. It's it's amazing. It's, it's a blast. Yeah, and I get to travel with my beautiful wife and your precious puppy and my little puppy. puppy yes and we 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 get to see the country it's a blast i'm it having is. a lot of fun and well, i get to meet some cool people it's very evident that you love what you do oh, yeah. yeah i mean and just the 2 hours we talked beforehand the knowledge you have that you know well that that, you can share is that and a token will probably get me on a bus but uh, i do feel like i've i've been able to pick up from others along the way and if i can increase our industry somehow with that knowledge that's what i want to do so right. the, the hard part is walking this this cat like 
wire that, that whatever they call it, the catwalk of like not offending people, but also, you know what I mean? And it's, right. it's, it's really difficult. Right. Sometimes the shed industry can be very difficult at times too. There's, there's so much good to it, but you don't want to, yeah, I never want to offend anybody. And I definitely want to provide service that, uh, is fair in right. all respects. So yeah, enough about me, enough about me. Well, any, um, any job is stressful. Any job is stressful. But if you don't enjoy your job enough that you want to come to work, then you're don't do not, it. You're, you're not in the right business. It was Stephanie maybe that talked about that on a episode about a year ago. Everybody should go back and listen to her episode. And she talked about how I was Travis Beachy co-hosted this when we were at the Shed Expo. And she was like, I was frustrated and I was unhappy. And then I, she found sheds. And not only did she find the shed industry, she found massive success in it because it fit her personality perfectly. Yep. And then she became like a number one dealer in the company kind of thing. You know what I mean? And it, yeah. it fulfilled. So she found where she wasn't finding success because she wasn't in the right spot when she found the right spot. And people will only understand that when you find it. Otherwise, yes. everything you're saying will sound bogus and salesy. Absolutely. It, but you talked about that. I remember specifically your conversation about being in the medical field and being like, oh, I'm going to go into sheds. What am I doing? There's this professional yeah. career and <laughs> then there's this over here, but it, it fit. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, was, um, it, it was, it was definitely meant to be. It yeah. was definitely meant to be. Um, Ladies, so. I appreciate so much your hospitality. Appreciate you having me Thank here. Hope coming. some people will call. Hope you expand and yeah. have nothing but success in your f future. I really wish that for you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah.